So I'm here with John. This is his 2004 95 Arc. I'll put his Instagram on the screen right here. He has done a lot of work to this, so today we're going to start off going over it on the outside, talking about some of the details a bit, and we'll take it out for a drive and see what it's all about. What we have here today is my 2004 95 Arc. Um, owned this car for a little over 11 years now, and it's started out as a automatic arc that's kind of transformed its way into a big turbo manual aero um, so, uh, what turbo are you running on this so that is one of Garrett's new lines it's the G30 660 um, kind of replaced the 3076 R for people who are familiar with turbos it's a smaller turbo and it flows more air so you kind of get the best of both worlds so how much boost does it run uh, we're looking at uh, about 25 to 30 depending on the air out here in Phoenix, the air is warmer, a little less dense, so we run a little bit more pressure. So this is actually running Krona's uh, turbo kit on here, so it comes with, what does that kit come with exactly? Uh, it comes with everything you see here, the turbo, the downpipe, the wastegate, all the associated piping, oil line, coolant line, the radiator fan, the fan shroud. Uh, it's designed to be a bolt-on kit directly for a big turbo. Um, Obviously, it needs supporting mods like uh, pistons, especially the, uh, <laughs> G7 guys out there. Um, but it's a great kit, pretty pretty much bolts straight on. This was actually the car that the kit was designed on and developed for. Um, the manifold and everything was designed in-house at Krona uh, up in West Virginia. Shout out to Matty. <laughs> um, he had this car for, I think, a little over three months and it came back angrier than ever. <laughs> So these hood vents, that's a question I see a lot of people seem to ask about. And they ask if they're real. Yes, they're very... Yeah, they are real, real and they are functional. As you can see, with the hood properly closed, the turbo does not have a lot of room. <laughs> it's very tight. It's very tight tucked in there. Right the turbo on. actually scrapes the hood a little bit, <laughs> but it's just enough to kind of ignore. So what suspension are you running on this? Uh, right now I have uh, case port coilovers. Um, just your typical uh, poly bushings all the way around. Um, other than that, it's mostly stock. And what wheels? Uh, those are BBS RS GTs. Um, you're looking at a 18 by nine and a half. So those- Pretty wide. Pretty wide. Uh, run an Indy Firehawk compound, uh, 255. Uh, it hooks up pretty well, but anything with a big power coming from the front wheels just likes right. to spin. And those are just 9.3 aero brakes on there? Yeah, 314s. Uh, you're looking at um, SPC brake pads. Okay. So red stuff. Still produces a good bit of dust, even though they're supposed to be the low, the low dust, dust model. And what about interior wise? What do you have done in here? Interior, like I said, started out as a uh, 2004 Arc. Um, personal opinion here, the gray interior kind of sucks. So, swapped all of it out. Um, Looking at vented aero seats out of a dame, um, aero dashboard out of some aero car I've ran across over the years. Um, door cards, uh, painted the speaker grill to make it look a little better, break up the gray a little more. Um, you're looking at just the eBay special steering wheel there. Um, it looks good though. It's, it's nice a Hirsch knockoff. Yeah. Gauge pods, what do you have for your uh, gauge pods up here? Where are they reading? We are looking at boost over in the center of the dash. Um, manifold pressure, whatever you want to call it. On the top, you have exhaust gas temperature. The middle, you're looking at oil pressure. And the bottom is the air fuel ratio. Exhaust wise, you're running uh, Krona's exhaust. Yeah, right. Krona's exhaust all the way back. Um, this one is catless. Uh, so. Phoenix doesn't really like that, but we'll gloss over that point. It's a <laughs> not important, minor detail. Three inch turbo back all the way through the blow through muffler. Um, great product. This is their their newer edition, the 2.0 edition. Same thing here, you know, full arrow body kit, uh, bumper. De Debadged and everything. Debadged. And what about this color? It's wrapped, but what color is this? Uh, this used to be steel gray. Well, still is technically, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you can see it in the door trims. Steel, which is a good base color, I think, if you're going to wrap it, because it's not really that noticeable. It's nice and subtle. Exactly. You know? So, uh, in between the door 
door crevices. You can't really tell, you can't really see it too much. Kind of blends in with the uh, the shadows. Right. It is a uh, 3M vinyl on here. It's a gloss blue metallic. Um, it's pretty much like a big sticker for those who don't know. It has a nice flake to it in the, uh, in the sun. So what do you say we take it for a drive and see what it's all about? All right, so driving this 9.5 and the clutch is a little bit difficult to work with. I parked conveniently on the hill right here. We're gonna have to have a little fun starting out with this. Oh, there we go, I did it. You can really hear it when the wastegate opens. Oh my God, <laughs> just a little bit on the throttle. So I know one thing that we didn't talk about when we were outside that people are going to want to know is how much power does this car actually make? So we haven't finished the tuning yet. We're still working on some uh, some more upgrades. I'm just going to find fifth, don't worry. There, there we go. <laughs> so, long story short, we're aiming for about 550 horsepower to the wheel. Um, pretty confident in that. Uh, we're looking at maybe increasing the injector size. Uh, right now it's at uh, 1050 cc's. Um, yeah, they're pretty big. Uh, <laughs> we're actually looking to bump them up to maybe like 1400s. Oh my god. Um, it's running E85, so have to spray a little bit more. Than, Smell uh, it too. Got to spray more of it than gasoline. So um, but we're doing a uh, stiffening the head up a little. Um, got another set of camshafts I'm going to throw in here. Right now it's running a uh, 234 NA uh, intake cam and a T5 exhaust cam. Um, which is arguably about the best uh, stock setup that you can put together. Uh, one thing I do want to comment on is this transmission. You said it has the genuine sob short shifter. Yeah, genuine sob short shifter. Um, the, some people might know, for those who don't, 9.5 is kind of notorious for shifter slop. The, the linkage kind of gets worn out over time, and uh, the only way you can really do fix it is rebuild it or replace it. So I uh, replaced it, so it's a freshened up uh, gear shifter mechanism, genuine soft short throw shifter. And it really, it's got a nice notchy. I'll roll into the boost here a little before we hit this turn. Let's see. Jesus. <laughs> oh, it's fun. You get a lot, get into a lot of trouble with this car for sure. Yeah, it's very easy to, uh, for it to get away from you. And it likes to throw the needle on the boost gauge all the way off the end. <laughs> but before you even really get into the power too. The yeah, it, uh, it, it sneaks up on you pretty well. <laughs> yeah. It has such a unique sound to it too because of that wastegate dump like you were talking about. It's just... It's... Yeah, so right now it has an open wastegate. Uh, for those who don't know, the wastegate controls the pressure going to the turbo. Or the ECU uses the wastegate to control the pressure going to the turbo. Uh, that may, determines how much boost the turbo makes. Um, so the wastegate will vent the excess exhaust gas out. Typically in a stock car, it vents it back into the exhaust and it runs through the muffler. Uh, in this setup, it dumps uh, just right in front of the oil pan. So that's why you get that, uh, almost sounds like Chewbacca. RPM about 40 miles an hour here. You got the stops on. Oh, you yeah. You got a little bit. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> um, Lucas is sitting in the back because we're going to be working on my 9.5 after this. So, not only is he letting me beat on his 9.5 for a video, afterwards, we're going to be working on my 9.5. We're going to be fixing his. <laughs> we're going to be fixing mine still, yeah. The, uh, the clutch engages like right at the floor it feels like almost yeah. it's a little bit hard to get used to it's uh it's a spec three spec stage three uh, clutch for oh, I'm, oh come on i i, I just is. said how it engages almost at the floor and then i just tried to drive it like it was my turbo x <laughs> i wasn't thinking at all i was listening to you talk and not think anyway sorry go ahead spec no, three. it's a spec stage three clutch so it's still a sprung clutch um i lightened the flywheel when i built the engine so it's an OEM flywheel, um, lightened out. I think we took about five pounds out of it. So, uh, 
revs up a little little quicker than it used to. Yeah. But, uh, still all the stock uh, slave cylinder and everything. Down here in Mexico, like we touched on earlier, uh, this car started out as a manual or an automatic, um, which is an automatic five-speed. It's a 2004, so it had the, the paddle shifters. Wasn't quite cutting it though. <laughs> so um, I got a donor car. Uh, most of the stuff came from a 2002 Aero five-speed. Bought it with a blown motor. Uh, transmission and everything was good in it though. So ended up doing the swap. Um, everything out of it all the shift linkage uh, you got to swap over uh, like the gauge cluster and things like that uh, a little bit of wiring but everything really bolts up on these cars and transmission swap is not that difficult there's actually all the holes for like the clutch lines and all that are, they're already drilled so there's no there's no not even drilling through the firewall or anything um, it was a little bit of a process you got to pull out the the dashboard to install the clutch pedal Obviously okay. take the transmission out, replace it with a manual, uh, the flywheel, the clutch, run the hydraulic lines. Um, electrical work wasn't too bad, a little bit of Tech 2 work, uh, reflash the ECU, hook up your reverse lights and you got a manual 9.5. Simple, you know. Yeah, yeah just, just simple. Uh, realistically it took me about, about three days of working on it on and off. We're gonna swap drivers here and we're gonna hit the highway so John can do some highway pulls. We're gonna you know Mexico um, and we'll wrap up the video there but uh, the roads here are great but unfortunately with the traffic and just being twisty roads we can't get up too fast so we're gonna cut it here and uh, get back to you guys when he's driving and going a little bit faster open diff no hand on the wheel <laughs> Jesus. So it pulls a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. And I'll see you all next time.